since this thing's struggling so much to build boost on the trans brake, I'm going to update everything from V5 to V6. We have a little bit more rev limit control. Since the Holly firmware updates take forever to load, I'm going to get this started and price it down, answer a whole bunch of emails, and then we'll come back and get started. So it turns out Holly watches my videos, which is kind of mind blowing, but they sent me some banners and some shirts and some some stuff. So once I get some time, I'll try and hang that stuff up. Uh, always greatly appreciated. All right, so the V6 uh, firmware update actually went far faster than any of the other ones I've done before. So we're good there. I've took the old V5 file, converted it to V6, and I've changed 300,000 things. So who knows if the thing's even gonna start. Probably have to cycle the ignition and do a couple things. Gonna do a TPS auto set. See if it'll start. Not so bad for a first start on ethanol. Idle's too high, so I'm going to readjust the throttle body and basically start all over again on uh, on the idle side of it. All right, that's way better. Now let's see if it'll start. Alright, I'll keep playing with that. That needs a little bit of touch up. It's uh it wants a little more throttle opening to start nice, but then it idles too high. So it's about finding the balance. Alright, quick backstory before we get started. Uh, this car is a longtime customer, a good friend of mine. It was here not too long ago and it had some issues with a handful of different things and hopefully we got all that stuff straightened out. I've tried asking Corey about 150 different ways like how much power he wants to make. Basically like where do you want me to stop and I can't get a solid answer. I think the closest thing I got to a number was like eight or nine hundred which hopefully we can do a little bit more than that. I'm going to start with the CO2 turned off and try and dial it in on the gate and kind of bump it up from there. Probably the biggest problem with this thing so far has just been getting the turbos to actually get going. But once they do go, then everything seems to be okay. So hopefully some of the offset stuff in this V6 software will help with that. Since the turbo basically would go from like nothing, nothing, nothing to everything all at once, trying to get it to control boost on the dyno is a little bit goofy too. So I ran a boost sensor from the dyno to the manifold and I'm gonna try and trigger the runs off of boost pressure. Theoretically, that should help. So we'll try that as well. I'll keep you updated if that worked worth a shit or not. I'm gonna warm it up, put some heat in the trans, and then we will make our first runs. All right, I've made some pretty drastic changes everywhere. So I'm expecting this to be kind of far off, but we'll just make a quick baby run real quick and see where we're at. I have the run to start at four pounds of boost so hopefully it'll make four psi as to why it felt weird so you know look a couple things over but fueling wise I was about six percent off like once we got past the the ramp in and I was way off on that probably gonna make a couple runs and not really worry about filming it too much because that stuff's boring to kind of shape the fuel curve down there so I'll come back when we start making some real runs they never said winning was easy we got that within a couple of percent just on the first run just kind of shocking and the good news is, is this thing looks like it's far happier this time around than it was last time. I'm gonna try and rev this one out a little bit higher. I don't know if I'll take it all the way max RPM or maybe like three quarters of the way there, but I'll make that decision uh, when everything's going a thousand miles an hour and it's super hard to think or concentrate.
I need to speed the dyno up. These runs are too long. Oh, one of the best things of this V6 software is when you go to data log, you have to turn the ignition off. Now we have this new option for download and open most recent log file. It makes me very happy. Good job, Holly. Here's where I was ramping in before, and I was at like like 36.4 billion closed loop percentage. So I got that pretty reasonable now. That's pretty damn close. I'll throw a, a hair of uh, fuel at it up top. Seven pounds, like 645 horsepower. This is a whole lot better than last time. I'm kind of excited now. I wish I didn't say that. Now all hell's gonna break loose. We're up over 100 horsepower. I'm talking to him through text about everything other than his car. He doesn't even know it's on the dyno. Revved it a little higher. So where I added fuel, I got to take it back out. But other than max RPM, uh, yeah, we're basically within 1%. So now I'm going to turn the CO2 on and configure the, the PID crap. Now it's time to start having some fun with it. But we're gonna start with 10 PSI dome pressure. The PID stuff was being a little finicky on this, but I would say it, it's being finicky to get it to like 100% where I'm happy with it. And it's probably like 98%. And sometimes when you just set them up, you know, stationary or whatever, and then you start making runs, it can vary a little bit. So uh, we might have to go back and revisit it. I saw something like fly off the wall or whatever. I didn't know what the hell happened, so I just got out of it real early, real early but made a bunch of power. I'm not sure what's worse, how bad my ass hurts from sitting in this seat or how hungry I am between the two. I don't know if I'm going to survive through the whole day. Who ate my fucking quinoa again? All right, dome pressure is super shitty, so I have to keep playing with that. I'd consider that to be 15 pounds. It touched 16 once or twice, but it's maintaining 15. And I figured I had a little too aggressive adding fuel. Yeah, this thing's doing pretty damn good. It's too good kind of not to show. Uh, the blue line here is today just on wastegate. The yellow here is last time with 10 pounds on, of CO2 on top of the gate. And then the red is today with 10 pounds of CO2 on top of the gate. Look at the difference. We're making basically the same power on the gate as we did before with 10 pounds. And then we're up like, what, 300 horsepower? Last time it was here, I was like beating myself up thinking I was too stupid to figure out how to make any power with this thing. So definitely on the right track. This is this is pretty cool. Went back and forth on whether I should throw some timing at it or turn the boost up. And last, all right. <laughs> uh, last time it was here, uh, I actually spent a decent amount of time playing with the timing because it just seemed like it was down on power. And uh, the kind of the timing values I'm with starting with today are what worked really good last time. But now it's like a whole new car. So uh, I'm just gonna put one degree in it, see if it does anything. I'm not necessarily expecting it to and obviously if it if it doesn't we'll pull it out and uh, turn the boost up but uh, we'll see what it will do with one more degree or we won't do anything because the switch panel just quit working 
Don't you do this to me, you raggedy bitch. Instantly I regret saying that. Come on, goddammit. This shit only happens to me. This type of shit happens every day. All right, looks like the good old fashioned uh, wiggle the battery cables fixed it. So that's super sketchy and something to address. God damn, my ass hurts. I'd say that shows that I was basically right on the money last time. So basically anything like positive manifold pressure and above, I put one degree in it. You can see we have a little bit of a dip here in the kind of peak torque area. And it had more of a gain there because I have more timing pulled out there. But up here, we're right around, basically didn't do anything. So we're gonna pull that, that degree out of it and uh, let's throw a little bit more CO2 at it. Usually at this point, I'd be going in 10 PSI increments. But since this thing's uh, working pretty well, I just went up five. So now we're at 15 pounds of dome pressure. Let's see what it does. I guess we're just gonna skip a thousand and go straight to 1100. I can work with that. I can't wait to compare this to the last one at the same dome pressure. Such minimal changes and it's, it's, everything is different. Dome pressure stuff's a little bit better. Still jumps around a lot, but this, like I said, this car's just sort of always done that. It might just have like a little leak or something. And again, I put some fuel in it because of how much power it's been wanting to make. Overshot that again. Probably noticed the trend. I tend to overshoot and bring it back rather than the other way around. So I got a little work to do there. Pretty much 20 PSI on the dot. I'm gonna yank a plug or two, throw another five pounds in the dome and uh, correct our fueling a little bit. Maybe after that round of, of shit, assuming it makes a little bit more power, uh, maybe I'll fill Corey in on what's actually going on and see if he'll actually tell me where he wants to stop this time. Kind of really too old to tell anything. Damn it, I guess I'll just put new plugs in it. Fine, I'll just do it myself. Old plugs are gapped at 18,000, so we'll just go ahead and do the same on the new ones. I guess we should check the fuel level. Plenty. Actually pulled a little bit of timing out of it and target air fuel changed just a little bit. Again, before this thing didn't make any power, so kind of leaning on a little bit to try and see if that was why. Five more pounds on the gate. Let's see what it'll do. Audience goes fucking ape shit. All right, we got some good news. We're only down 1,500 horsepower from the class he races in. Basically another 100 horsepower. Let's call Corey, see where he wants to quit. Shit, this thing probably do 13 and change, no problem. Here's, <laughs> Jesus. Here's with 20 PSI on the gate before, so the same. That's crazy down here holy shit wow time i've ever actually like called you on the phone yeah it's like you probably think the car's on fire or something like that so I, i've tried asking you a hundred times on like where you wanted to stop with this but we've never really made it to a point of having to make that decision at 40 so let's say 4900 rpm both run, last time you're here and this time you're here both with 20 pounds on the dome uh, the horsepower gain at 4,800 RPM is 724. Yeah, that's the only logical explanation, I think. But so at 20 pounds of dome pressure, I'm at 1,222 horsepower right now. Yeah, I know, right? So I don't know if you want to keep going or call it good here or how you want to, you know, move forward. But obviously, it's still together right now. And I, I, I should we've never been anywhere close to this, so I don't even know what kind of power power you built this thing for. Okay, yeah, well let's call it good here then. If you get a hair up your ass, we can always play with it at the track, but I'd rather get you to the track than scatter parts on the dyno. I upgraded you to V6, 
and I've set up a whole bunch of like rev limit offset crap that I haven't had a chance to test yet. Realistically, like at the, the RPM you were leaving at, it was down 700 horsepower, so that might have had everything to do with why it wouldn't get out of its own way. Yeah, I'm actually, uh, I'm probably more excited for you than you are. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So, all right, cool. Well, we'll call it here. Um, I haven't eaten all day. I'm about to die. So I'll mess with this rev limit stuff in the morning. And uh, shit, what's today? Thursday or something? Uh, Tuesday? Shit, I'm all screwed up. Um, yeah, are you are you going to there any tracks open or anything this weekend? Okay, cool. Well, if you do, let me know. And uh, either maybe if the moon and the stars align, I can run out there with you. And then if not, just bring some internet and I can uh, connect and make some changes or whatever. Cool, man. I'll talk to you. See ya. So much more enjoyable to make those phone calls. Well, as I'm sure you probably heard, we're going to call it quits here. I'll mess with some rev limit stuff in the morning. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.